Hello everyone, my name is Willie Reed, I'm here with my name is, and I'm going to be reviewing WWE's Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Now, before I begin, I just want to say I'm not going to go into great details with all the matches, just the ones that I think were more worth talking about. And I'm not also going to talk about the pre-show, I mean, I didn't see it, so I don't know what happened during the match. I know it ended with Cesaro, Neville, and Ziggler winning the match against Rusev, Sheamus, and King Barrett, but I didn't see the show, so I'm going to focus on the pay-per-view. We opened up the show with the first match of the night, which was John Cena's open challenge for the U.S. Championship, and originally I thought it was going to be Tyler Breeze, because we saw him make his debut on SmackDown, but instead what we got was Deb Coulter coming out, and we all assumed it was going to be Jack Swagger, but instead... It was him introducing Alberto Del Rio. Oh, you heard me right, folks. Alberto Del Rio is back in WWE, and he faced G John Cena for the U.S. title. Now, if you don't know what happened to him, last year Del Rio was let go from WWE because he got into an argument with a, an employee that made some racist comments towards him. So because of that, Alberto Del Rio was let go. And I'm assuming Triple H did something to try to bury the hatchet and maybe maybe even got rid of the guy who made those comments. So either way, Alberto Del Rio came back. The fans were happy to see him. I was very happy to see him. And Alberto Del Rio, he had a good match. Uh, it wasn't long, though. It was kind of like close to eight minutes, so it wasn't a long match. It was still good. It was still good to see Alberto and um, him taking it to John Cena. These two guys have so much history with each other, so... You could tell that these guys knew each other during the match. It ended, though, with Alberto Del Rio getting the super kick in and is now the new United States Champion. Yep, Alberto Del Rio won the Royal Rumble. He won the WWE Championship. He won Money in the Bank. He won the uh, the World Championship and now can add the United States Championship to his uh, resume. Even though he is currently the AAA Mega Champion. I think that's what it's called. And um, the other promotion he's at. So, I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they worked out some kind of deal. Either way, I'm happy to see him back. And it'll be interesting to see what happens next. We had then the next match, which was the first Hell in a Cell match between Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt. This was probably the second best match of the night. Because these guys just beat the holy hell out of one another. Um, they used candlesticks, they used chair, they used tables, and this was a very fun match. These guys, the fans were cheering for Bray, then they were cheering for Roman, it was a back and forth, so it was fun to see that. During the match, um, Roman speared Bray from the apron, they were both on the apron, and Roman speared Bray through a table that was set up on the outside. That was awesome to see. It ended with Roman Reigns getting the victory, though, with a spear, and, well, the rivalry ended now between him and Bray Wyatt, which I'm happy for. And maybe this will lead to Roman getting a world title shot. But I was kind of disappointed Bray was not the victor here, but he still had a great match with Roman. So I am hoping that he, the storyline they have set up for him for the end of the show will will be a good one. I'll go, I'll go into details about that later. But the next match was the New Day facing off against the Dudley Boy for the tag team titles. I'm not going to go into details about this match because this was a disappointment. It ended with the New Day getting the victory. They used the trombone to hit uh, Bubba Ray in the back, but the referee was not looking. And Kofi Kingston hit uh, Bubba with the Trouble in Paradise and got the victory. So, still your tag team champions, the New Day. It, it was terrible. I mean, they should have had the Dudleys win. It was obvious they should have won this match, but nope, we didn't get that. The next match was Charlotte versus Nikki for the Divas Championship. Again, this was not one I'm not going to go into great details because, A, Nikki dominated the whole match. So it was freaking boring. I did not like it at all. Charlotte ended up getting the victory after countering Nikki's uh, finisher, the rack attack, and locked in the figure eight and won the match by submission. So still the Divas champion, Charlotte. So I'm happy that she won, and hopefully this will lead to her and Paige facing off for the title. Or maybe it will lead to Charlotte and Sasha Banks. You never know. 
Next match was Seth Rollins versus Kane for the World Championship. Again, this was not one I was very interested in because A, the buildup was... It was not, not bad, but again, we kind of figured Seth was going to retain because really, who really saw Kane win in this match? I didn't. I don't think anybody else did. The crowd was definitely not into this match. Uh, Seth ended up retaining the title, so he wins. He won the match, and that means Kane lost, so Corporate Kane is fired as his role as Director of Operations. So I guess that means Kane is now going to remain as Mask Kane. I don't mind that at all. We then get to Kevin Owens versus Ryback for the Intercontinental title. Again, not going to go into great details about this match because... A, this was only five minutes long, and B, they didn't bother building this matchup up, which sucked, because I think these guys could have a good build-up, but nope, we didn't get that at all. Ended up with Kevin Owens retaining the title, and he's still the champion, so I'm happy for that, but still sucks how they didn't... You know, I have noticed that they have not been doing well with getting fans hyped up for some of these matches, like the tag team titles was a disappointment, the Divas title match... Glass shot had won, but it was a very bore fest. Seth and Kane kind of knew it was going to suck. Kevin Owens and Ryback. So, we've had like seven matches for the pay-per-view, but only two that I've talked about were much better than the last four. So, that is why I was very happy that this last match, Brock Lesnar and Undertaker, did not disappoint. I was actually kind of concerned that it was, but... I underestimated that these guys would beat the holy hell out of each other, and that's what we got. Brock Lesnar and Undertaker just beat the holy hell out of one another. These guys got busted open. The doctor tried to wipe out the blood, but these two guys kept going on and on in this fight. It was fun to see that Undertaker got hit with two F5s. He was able to kick out, but Brock continued being the hell. Even at one point, just start punching Undertaker, just wailing on him. And that was, wow, that was very surprising to see that. I'm glad he didn't actually, like, kill Undertaker during this match. Uh, Brock was tearing up the ring to show the boards. He took out the, the ring cover and took out the uh, the mat. And then he revealed the boards, but he got hit with a choke slam right on the boards. Undertaker hit a tombstone. I thought that was it, but Brock kicked out. In the end, Brock was able to hit a low blow on The Undertaker, getting him back for the last few times he got hit with a low blow, and hit the third F5, and Brock Lesnar has defeated The Undertaker for, let me see, it was at No Mercy twice, it was then at WrestleMania, and then we had this event, so that's four and one, so they fought four. Six times, one was a draw, one was Undertaker winning, and four times Brock has defeated Undertaker. So, congratulations to Brock. He defeated the Undertaker. That's it. Undertaker got up. Well, he tried to sit up, and he was able to do it. And the fans, they gave him respect. I gave him respect. We all gave him respect. He deserved it. And as he was going for his pose... To, uh, to get on his one knee and do his pose. The lights went out and Bray Wyatt came out with the rest of the Wyatt family. And I have to say, this was kind of a shocker that we saw this. And JBL found it to be disgusting because he did not like what they did. I'm pretty sure he's going to change his tune. You know he will. But anyways, Undertaker got beat up by all the Wyatt members. He didn't get hit with the finishers, which was good because I don't think this guy would survive. And they ended up carrying him out of the ring, and the fans were booing loudly at Bray. And you know what? I am curious to see where this is going to go. Maybe we'll see Bray and Undertaker one-on-one -on -one at Survivor Series where Bray defeats him. Maybe. If they do go with that route, will that be good? First off, give this guy time. Give him weeks to relax. Take him to a spa. Let him go... Get some relaxation before he faces off against Bray, who I think should have won against Roman. Then they would have led to him coming out to face Undertaker, and it would have been good. But no, they had him lose to Roman, and now he came out to attack the Undertaker. I don't know why, but I guess we're going to see what's going to happen next. I guess he's going to try making up for his loss at WrestleMania. I don't care, but I know one thing. 
This was a great pay-per-view. It ended better than WrestleMania. It ended better than the last few pay-per-views we got. So thank you for doing something smart, but you still made some very dumb decisions, like not giving the titles to the Dudleys. You better make it up for us, WWE. You better make it up. Uh, that's it, everybody. If you guys have a different opinion about the pay-per-view, leave some comments below. Let me know what you think. And I'll be here next time to give you more love and more entertainment. So take care. See you next time.